here's a little follow-up with our 1440 we picked up a couple weeks ago. So I'm not quite sure exactly what we're going to do with this project, but I did want to let you guys know what, what we've done so far. And uh, kind of go over a little bit of uh, what is really common on these Cyclops machines as far as the electrical system problems go. So uh, we got it off of the trailer, we had it running, and uh, looked at the engine and realized it's going to need a little bit of work. It's definitely consumed some oil and has a little bit of the, the Briggs issues going on here. We do have one oil leak that's external that is not just a little bit of excessive crankcase pressure. I think there's actually a bad seal right here. I believe it's probably the o-ring slash gasket area of this rear cover here. And basically there's an oil pressure galley that comes through the case and out towards the oil filter adapter. And I think that's probably the most likely place that that's leaking. It's, you know, not significant, but it's enough. It stays wet down there. I've cleaned it off already. Um, but the rest of the work that we did to this uh, off camera was primarily related to the electrical system issues. So it was not charging. We got it to charge by putting on a new voltage regulator. And then it stopped charging again. And I was like, wow, I just blew a regulator. Well, no, I didn't just blow the regulator. I'll show you. Oh, we gotta be careful. No Cyclops. Careful. No hurdy. No hurdy to the Cyclops. Okay. So, I found that this connector here was actually uh, just basically loose. The terminal was actually loose inside the connector, so I'm gonna do a proper fix here and actually splice in, or not splice in, but put in a new terminal and connector. We've got some of these uh, connectors in our stock for some of our custom harness work, so we'll just actually properly fix that. Um, but even though it was charging, I was still seeing the low voltage indicator come on the dash, and that is that guy there amp indicator so this is a very common problem on these tractors can you guys stop go away jeez they're probably gonna get more loud now that I told them to go away uh, so what you'll see on these tractors is this light come on while you're mowing especially if if you're mowing and you've got the lights on so what's happening there is this voltage sensor, and we have a whole video series on the Cyclops wiring on a, on a Super that will go over this, but we'll go briefly here. So this voltage sensor here takes the key switch wire, this hot wire, and senses the voltage uh, to ground here, the potential energy between voltage and ground, and um, or between positive and ground, and then it will apply uh, it will switch to turn on the light on the dash if it goes below like 12 and a half volts But the problem on these Cyclops tractors is everywhere in here gets really stanky and rusty so Pulled this off clean this ground replace this ground Same thing with the starter solenoid. I replaced the ground Here that goes up Into the battery cable replaced the battery cable ends both of them then also replace the fuse holder because they crap out. I was getting intermittent key switch uh, problems where basically it would, if I would jiggle the fuse holder, it would come back on. I said go away. Stop it. And then we also replaced the key switch itself. So after doing those things and replacing the hour meter so we can kind of track what's going on, you guys this morning are just too much. Now they're going to freak out. Come on. Come on. Come on Let's start it up. And we got a little voltage sensor hooked up here. So we can actually monitor what's happening. Now we'll sit there and we'll actually charge at idle where we weren't charging at idle before. Pretty 
good. It's actually really good. So now we're charging really well. And then also our amp indicator on the dash doesn't come on um, with the PTO on. It was just coming with the PTO on and it does not do that anymore. So basically it, it now is getting about the same system voltage as it as we see at the battery. There's a little bit of voltage drop through the rest of the wiring. I think there's like seven tenths of a drop between what I see at the battery and what I see down here, but that's okay. Um, overall with the tractor, um, we fixed a couple other things. So uh, the deck is in pretty good shape. We put on a new deck belt, ran that for a while. Um, this spindle over here, I still can't get to take grease, so we're gonna have to pull that apart, make sure that can take grease. But this 48 cuts very, very nicely, and um, is, is pretty quiet, honestly, for what it is. The gearbox for the steering is sloppy. I adjusted it as much as I could, but we still have, this is actually the second Cyclops I've got this year that's got a really sloppy steering box. So if you look, see how much play there is here before anything happens at the wheel. So I can't get any more than that out of it, otherwise it starts getting tight when I go to the right or left. So we're going to have to, if we do restore this, we're definitely going to have to pull the gearbox and rebuild it. Um, engine wise, uh, not great but not terrible still consumes some oil i pulled the plugs and looked it's definitely it's using some oil on the cylinder on the opposite side this side looks pretty good but i think it probably needs rings and uh a reseal and all that kind of good stuff um yeah and then we just went through and basically serviced everything got all the grease fittings hooked up and we've been using it this week now that it charges well and does what it's supposed to do somebody had cut the seat springs and I don't know why but they were about I think there was like one or two coils of these springs left I don't know why they did that um, so I took some 2000 series springs which are a little bit taller uh, for comparison here's a stock set of springs for a Cyclops and over here 2000 series springs so they're a little taller but we just had them laying around got those put back on there so it rides a little bit better and we did one seat modification too i do these i like to do this on on the cyclops tractors where i add a third hole so just basically in the same line in the same plane same angle just at this top corner so this hole was not here from the factory so uh, this is the factory hole for the later cyclops and then the earlier ones we're down in this hole here. What that does is it changes the angle of the seat. So it can tilt forward like that or up like that, depending on what's comfortable for you. Since they had these taller springs in here, I just wanted the front of the seat to come up a little bit. Makes it a little more comfortable. Um, the Cyclops tractors in general are probably the most comfortable cub to operate uh, on a regular basis. So I wanted to kind of preserve that. Yeah, so I don't know if we're going to use the rear end in this and put it in the 2182 or just use the guts out of this rear end to fix the 2182s or if we're going to rebuild it and restore it. It's kind of a toss-up between the 1440 with manual lift and the 16, sorry, 1641 that has hydraulic lift. I mean, obviously the hydraulic lift is more desirable, but I don't know, I'm a little attached to the 1440. I don't know why. It's just a little bit more of a basket case. I have a soft spot for the for the really beat up ones. So we'll see. I just wanted to give you all an update. Have a good weekend.